Kia ora, this is Arun Jacob, your friendly and frank licensed New Zealand immigration advisor, as well as education advisor, coming live once again from the beautiful city of Hamilton uh, here in New Zealand. Uh, coming live as always on Facebook, YouTube, uh, two channels, uh, my channel, which is Arun Jacob, uh, as well as on AJB Global, which is the official channel of uh, our company, uh, which is AJV Services, also known as AJV Global. And I'm also coming live on Instagram. So I'm going to quickly turn and say hello to all my wonderful uh, followers on Instagram. So at the, today the angles change a little bit. Normally I try and keep the Instagram camera as well closer to the laptop so that, you know, people can uh, follow it and it'll but yeah, hey, look today, just have a slightly different angle uh, for my Instagram uh, thing. So. Yeah, it's been a while since I came live. I think I had to cancel my uh, live session last week, and uh, yeah, because I've been uh, very, I've been a very, very busy guy uh, going around and uh, being the sponsor uh, of uh, something really wonderful we at AGB managed to achieve over the last few uh, days and weeks. So AGB was one of the key sponsors at uh, the India versus New Zealand uh, Test match that was played in uh, Christchurch at the Hadley Oval uh, Park uh, in Christchurch. Uh, and uh, we were the, absolutely the proud sponsors of, uh, uh, so we were like the chief sponsors, the main sponsors at uh, the Hadley Oval Ground. And by virtue of which I was invited uh, to uh, be part of the proceedings for the cricket match, so which was wonderful because uh, uh, it was rather uh, special and uh, quite a good privilege to uh, be in that pavilion with the who's who of uh, uh, cricket. Uh, so the some of the greats of New Zealand cricket, like Sir Richard Hadley and Brendan McCullum and uh, you know Brian uh, McMillan and quite a lot of them were all hanging around the pavilion. And you know I was there with a few of my friends, uh, and uh, they did mention it during the. <clears throat> lunch break as well that uh, you know AJV is the sponsor for the test match it felt rather special uh, felt very happy uh, uh, I think money well spent because our boards were on the uh, two main pavilions where the players were sitting the Indian players and the uh, New Zealand players the black caps and the Indian team had that separate uh, uh, dressing rooms and on both the balconies was this big massive black and white board uh, which said uh, AJV education migration and uh, it was stunning to sit at that beautiful ground and watch uh, test cricket and uh, see the name of our company you know very prominently displayed and going live to millions of people in different parts of the world and then after the match got over ICC posted uh, which is the International Cricket Council uh, so they posted a picture of uh, Virat Kohli uh, the Indian cricket captain and Kane Williamson the New Zealand cricket captain and uh, strangely it looked like almost they were posing for it but uh, right in the middle of both of them was uh, the AJV sign and it looked like they were actually posing for it but it was one of those one in a million random clicks which uh, uh, was then again posted by ICC on their uh, official Instagram uh, feed and uh, which has got 11.5 million view followers so yeah very special and uh, uh, and then, of course, uh, the, the, that picture also got uh, posted out to BBC and uh, uh, Times of India and quite a lot of other uh, news channels. So, yeah, very happy, uh, very pleased. I also got to meet uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis with quite a few senior people of the uh, Indian cricket team. Uh, so I had uh, a lovely evening with uh, Mr. Ravi Shastri, who is the coach uh, of the Indian uh, cricket team. And then I also caught up with uh, Bharat Arun, who is the bowling coach, and Sridhar, who is the fielding coach and uh, <clears throat> Vikram Rathod, who is the batting coach. And then quite a few of the players were also coming around and uh, catching up and got to meet some of the players' wives as well, because they were all uh, hanging out about in the bulk, uh, in the pavilion where uh, all of us were, you know, sort of sitting and enjoying the match. So I kind of got to speak and say hello to quite a few of the players' wives as well. It was nice, you know, nice, uh, gentle way of uh, watching test cricket and also being a sponsor and uh, feeling rather special. I hope uh, you guys will uh, watch this on your TVs or, you know, go back and uh, check to see on uh, different feeds. And yeah, I hope you do that. So that's what happened. So that's what that's been the one of the most exciting things that has happened to me in the last uh, 
10, 15 days. I think all the travel did take a little out of me because I came back home with a reasonably uh, tired body and mind. <laughs> when I was telling my team today that you know, they're going to see a very sick, uh, you know, Arun Jacob coming and uh, doing this uh, live session. So, yeah, if I start coughing and spluttering and gasping for breath, people uh, uh, don't uh, uh, stress and think I'm about to have a heart attack or something. I'm just fine. Just a bad throat as always. And also the weather's turning here in New Zealand. And uh, today we had a fair bit of rain. Uh, I had been, I'd been to Auckland with, along with my senior colleague, Mary. And uh, so we had gone to, you know, speak to somebody uh, who does some work for AJV. So <clears throat> on the way back, it was absolutely bucketing down. And uh, it was, yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully the strong uh, hot summer we've had in New Zealand is kind of uh, going to get over and we are going to move into beautiful autumn and uh, experience all those lovely autumn colors and then gradually move into that zone where we start can't sit with just this t-shirt uh, and start having those nice thick uh, <laughs> uh, you know uh, uh, jumpers and uh, sweaters around us. Talking about t-shirt uh, I'm sure you guys can see that uh, today I'm not wearing my usual uh, AJV t-shirt which is what I normally wear and do these live sessions. This t-shirt, as you can see, uh, is from Lincoln University uh, <clears throat> of New Zealand. Uh, so while I was in, uh, New, uh, while I was in uh, Christchurch, uh, not only did I watch uh, and enjoy the test cricket as a sponsor, uh, but I also uh, took the time out to go and meet uh, our uh, colleagues and friends at uh, uh, Lincoln University from the international department, as well as uh, from uh, the University of Canterbury, where they actually had a, a day to introduce some new things that they are doing and stuff. So I, I was not just um, uh, sitting and watching cricket and acting all important, but I was also uh, getting out there and doing some work. So I went to uh, Lincoln University, and as has been the norm with our live sessions, which uh, myself uh, <clears throat> and uh, my colleagues Mary and Tulika and Nabia as uh, licensed advisors, we all come live and we've decided that, you know, it takes a while for uh, 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 some of the questions to appear on those live sessions. So we decided we're going to uh, start each of our sessions talking about one particular institution to give you a better understanding and insight. And today, my choice, uh, I was uh, asked to speak about Lincoln University, which is the reason I'm wearing sitting with this uh, lovely T-shirt, which I got last week from um, Lincoln University. So I was there. Uh, along with my colleague, Nicholas, who is our official filmmaker. And we did a nice walkthrough of the campus. And uh, I also got to meet Roger, uh, who is the director international at Lincoln. And then I met Annie, who is a dear friend for many, many years and the international marketing manager. And I met Julian Becker and a few other people and uh, went around and uh, Nick and I, we actually shot a, a lovely walkthrough of the campus. So Nick is about to complete the editing on that and he's going to put it together but today uh the i need to speak a little bit about lincoln and uh do a bit of an introduction so yeah lincoln uh, is uh, is a very interesting institution because you know uh it it was initially called the school of agriculture of canterbury uh university college so it started uh, in and you know a lot of people might think it is a very recent institution it is not it has actually started in 1878 which is a very very long time ago so it's like more than a uh, 100 uh, years old and almost coming up to its 78, 98, 80, 98, 2000. Yeah, almost coming up to its 150th year, actually, as an institution. So it's got a lot of uh, strong history behind it. And it did start, obviously, with a lot of focus on uh, agriculture. Uh, and uh, the first question, you know, when, that comes to people's mind when you talk about Lincoln University uh, is whether uh, it is named after Abraham Lincoln, uh, because that's the most famous Lincoln in the world, of course. Uh, so uh, when I was doing my walkthrough and Julian was the host and he was taking me, guiding me around the campus, I also asked him the same question as the opening uh, question when, you know, we started our walkthrough. And uh, he laughed and he said, no, it's got nothing to do with uh, Abraham Lincoln, the American president. And the fact is that this um, university is located in a town called Lincoln. Uh, it's a small city called Lincoln, which is about 10 to 15 minutes away from Christchurch. So it is like, uh, you know, like a sister city to uh, Christchurch. And uh, so because it is located in this uh, 
a city called Lincoln is the reason it is called Lincoln University. It's got nothing to do with Abraham Lincoln or civil rights. <laughs> so yeah, so and it started off with a very strong uh, uh, emphasis towards agriculture. Uh, and you know that that sort of uh, uh, thing yeah, because you know it was a land-based university. But like I said, it was uh, uh, it's not a new uh, institution. It's been around uh, as uh, uh, when it started its life as School of Agriculture of Canterbury University College back in 1878. So it's been around for a very very long time. Uh, and uh, the beauty of uh, I'll just reel off some of the. Uh, things that I personally feel about Lincoln University because, you know, I mean, uh, uh, there is a lot of published data already which you everybody can read. But I think what you want is uh, first-hand information from me as a guy who lives in New Zealand and talking about this uh, university. Yeah, it's a uh, very good university and being away from Christchurch and being in a smaller city. And again, not very far. It only takes about 15 minutes to uh, reach Christchurch City. So the cost of living is a lot lesser uh, in Lincoln uh, uh, town. So a lot of students who go to Lincoln University actually stay in uh, Lincoln City. So the cost of living is quite less and uh, they're able to commute to the uh, university quite easily. Campus is fantastic. You know, I've been there a uh, few times and uh, this was, uh, last week was the most recent fantastic campus. Uh, for those of you uh, who are into big into sports, uh, two very important uh, facts about Lincoln is that it's produced some of the best uh, uh, rugby players of New Zealand, as well as some of the best uh, cricket players of New Zealand. In fact, uh, New Zealand cricket has got its high performance center in on the campus, in the campus of Lincoln University. So if you're studying at Lincoln University, they're more than likely you'll be rubbing shoulders with a lot of these famous cricketers who come there and increase their performance and do their training there. The latest star of uh, <clears throat> New Zealand cricket, uh, which is this tall giant called uh, Kyle Jamieson, who is a six feet, eight inches uh, tall giant, who's had a fantastic debut against India. Uh, he's from Lincoln University as well. So he is probably one of the latest stars to come out of Lincoln University. So although the universities are moving away a little bit uh, from that and uh, coming on to the kind of uh, subjects and courses that uh, Lincoln teaches, although it started off with a very strong agriculture focus, uh, now they also teach, and, and this I'm uh, uh, absolutely reading off a list, so they also teach academic English, accounting, agribusiness, animal science, biochemistry, biological science, business management, commerce, communication, computing and information technology, design, ecology, economics, engineering, entomology, environmental studies, finance, food science, forestry, genetics, horticulture, international rural development, landscape architecture, law studies, uh, management, uh, Maori studies, marketing, microbiology, philosophy, physical science, plant protection, plant science, psychology, quantitative methods, recreation, research essays, uh, science, social science, soil science, tourism, uh, valuation and property management, uh, uh, water resource management, and wine growing. So as you guys can see, it has now acquired a much more uh, <clears throat> all round sort of, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 picture and offering a lot of courses and it's moved away. I won't say it's moved away, it retains its core and heart as an agriculture uh, related uh, institution. And then of course it's now added a lot of other things including IT and uh, you know business and uh, commerce, design, so management. So, all, so they have kind of become a much more uh, well-rounded university. Now the one um, course I think that stands out for us as an agency or a company that is uh, recruiting students to go to Lincoln is definitely food science. So <clears throat> we've had a lot of clients who have gone to uh, Lincoln University to do their food science. And this particular uh, course is doing exceptionally well uh, because uh, I think uh, the uh, food science is in the long-term skill shortage list of New Zealand and Lincoln has got a really strong department. I met this very delightful uh, Italian lecturer, uh, I forget his name, uh, uh, who is uh, sort of the head of the department uh, I'm trying to remember his name, but he had this very delightful Italian accent. And uh, so he took us into the labs where they're doing the food science and showed us around. And again, I asked him a lot of questions about employability and uh, uh, careers after they finished this course. And he was very, very uh, positive and buoyant about what is possible. So food science certainly stands out. And I can tell you with assurance, uh, boys and girls, that uh, doing this course from Lincoln University will set you up for success uh, because food scientists are in. <clears throat> Uh, the long-term 
uh, skill shortage list of New Zealand and all our students who have gone to Lincoln for this particular course have emerged uh, as very successful uh, employees and uh, uh, and the, most of them have also gone on to get their residence and uh, yeah, absolutely great. So, but I mean, uh, but again, I know uh, word of caution, Lincoln is not only about uh, food science or only about agriculture. Uh, it's got a lot of other um, <clears throat> lovely facets and elements as well, including, you know, IT engineering and stuff. Uh, and, you know, the other highlight of my trip to Lincoln was when they took us to the vineyard uh, because they also have a course in winemaking. And, you know, it was lovely to be there. And we actually plucked some grapes of the uh, wines there and tasted them. And it was yeah, pretty fun to speak to some of the professors. And, you know, I was hoping to come back with a bottle of wine as a gift, but that didn't happen. But I did get this lovely T-shirt. So that's about Lincoln. So you can choose Lincoln uh, with 100% confidence. There is no problem with uh, it, it, its location or its delivery or its standards or the kind of support you will get from the international office and your fellow uh, you know, students while you're at Lincoln, all right? So think of Lincoln uh, strongly and uh, talk to us at AJB and we will make it happen. Okay, so that was a pretty nice, good, long introduction. I hope there are some queries now that have come up. I'm also gonna catch my breath for a moment and uh, have a sip of water before my throat dries up and I start coughing my guts out on live camera. <laughs> so, hey, look, guys, I also forgot to show you my license, which is what I normally tend to do when I start my session. So that license, uh, it's almost on the verge of expiry, actually. So after the session, I'll need to sit and work on my, um, uh, uh, yeah, the uh, renewal of my license. And the way renewals work for us, uh, licensed advisors is that there are two types of renewals. There is something called a, fast track renewal and then there is something called uh by uh you know like the exam and some of the work you've done so there have been no issues and uh you've all been kind of you know doing your work diligently and uh, there are no complaints raised against you then you actually get something called the fast track renewal which is what i got this time uh so all i have to do is go online and uh, upload some documents pay the fees and hopefully i will get a replacement for that very very soon and from next time onwards hopefully i will start showing my new license cool now here we are uh 46 people watching this out of which a lot of my wonderful team members are already there hello gang hope you're all doing well uh sorry if i don't sound as energetic as as always but uh all of you are making an old man work way too hard and so it is not me but all of you who's uh, pulling <laughs> i was just kidding guys anyway right ankit Vagela, our fantastic uh agv client and uh, fabulous uh student who makes us all very proud and he says had also the pleasure of Virat Kohli walking into my souvenir shop last month oh fantastic Bankit. that's such I've met other cricketers in tank juice uh, outlet in Wellington fantastic they can roam around freely in New Zealand because it's relatively safer and not a lot of people in here recognize them that is true actually Ankit I think that's a good observation in Hamilton <clears throat> in Hamilton uh, the <clears throat> AJB office is right next to the Novotel Hotel where the cricketers stay when they come to New Zealand, especially to Hamilton. And every day our team would watch them going in and out of their hotel. And they were they all got uh, used to that uh, line bikes. And uh, so our team, all members also saw Virat, his wife Anushka, and most of the other boys of the team just going around and just being them. So that's the beauty of New Zealand. I think we don't have the celebrity culture here uh, and so i i find people uh, uh, are not enamored by celebrities or you know big politicians or cricketers they really don't care and i think that also kind of gives us migrants people who come from other cultures you know especially a country like india where there is a massive celebrity cult so to speak and you know those these poor people can't even walk on the streets uh, without getting mobbed and stuff like that so i like that aspect about new zealand is that they they just look at you you know whether you're a big cricket player or a rugby player or a politician they just look at you as another human being and i think that is another aspect of new zealand that i really really like uh, as a person who lives here and as a proud kiwi now so yeah well recognized ankit and yeah virat is probably in fact i think virat made a very interesting uh, statement at the start of the uh, series he said uh, even if you want to hate the new zealanders you can't so i mean coming from Virat, that's a pretty big statement so 
yeah, that's the kind of uh, yeah, uh, country that we are blessed to live in. So warm welcome to come to New Zealand and uh, become a Kiwi yourself. And the way to do it is just give us a call or send us an email. And those are our contact details. And uh, if you do that, you guys will be able to uh, get in touch with us. We have toll free numbers in India and New Zealand. So you guys can uh, uh, get in touch with us and our team will do the best we can to get you here into New Zealand. Cool. Next one is from Karen. Uh, Karen K. Yes, he says, hi, Arun. I'm an AGV client with uh, Mariam uh, for graduate diploma in engineering technology with mechatronics strength. Should I choose Welltech or Wintech? Okay. Uh, Karen, uh, thanks for that uh, uh, piece of information. Thanks for uh, you know uh, establishing yourself uh, uh, as an AGV client, and I'd be delighted to answer your question. Do you want to go to Welltech or Wintech? Well, that's a very difficult question to ans answer, Karen, because both of them are very good institutions. Both of them are owned and operated by the government of New Zealand. Both are large institutions. So, uh, one is based in the capital city of New Zealand, which is Weltec, and uh, the other one is <clears throat> based in one of the fastest growing cities in New Zealand, Hamilton, where I live and where uh, AJV is headquartered. And uh, because of the proximity to Auckland, we are growing very rapidly and a lot of people are choosing to come to Hamilton and move away from Auckland because there is also a proposal to set up a railway line. Between, I mean, there is already a railway line, but they're trying to introduce some kind of a high-speed train between now Hamilton and Auckland. And one of the local members of parliament is a very good friend. And, you know, because being a member of parliament, he has these insights as to when the things are going to happen. And he's very uh, confident that this uh, high-speed rail. So it's a very difficult uh, question for me to answer whether uh, Welltech or Wintech because both are, are very good institutions and we have a great working relationship with both of them. Like I said, both are good cities and uh, I would say go through and in a situation like this when uh, I uh, simply cannot say choose this or choose that, uh, I would suggest because you are the student, sit with the papers of individually ask Mariam to uh, or you know you can do some research of your own and uh, sit with the papers because sometimes there'll be a slight variation in papers being offered at Weltech uh, and the papers being offered in Wintech and sometimes that one single paper might be something that will reach out to you and say okay that is of interest to me so there might be something like uh, how to start a business in mechatronics as a paper uh, which one institution is offering and the other one is not offering and you might be a future uh, you know potentially uh, an entrepreneur and you might want to get uh, some information around that kind of stuff as well so that's my recommendation karen but yeah both of them are equally good uh, institutions the other factor you can consider is if you have uh, any friends or relatives in either one of the city that is also a good factor because it's always good to have somebody uh, who uh, uh, you know has already come ahead of you and that can help you to get in faster. The other factor, of course, to consider is that uh, AJV is based in Hamilton, so you know you'll always have us to fall back on. But uh, you know AJV is also going to set up uh, offices in Auckland, Wellington, and Christchurch shortly. We, in fact, today I was discussing with Mary, my colleague, while we were going to Auckland and coming back here. So more than likely, we're going to roll out our offices in all the other cities as well. So yeah, like I said, sit with the papers and hopefully that will give you the answer. All right, Karen. But hey, look, thank you so much for choosing AJV. Much, much appreciated, uh, I mean, because you know, as smart young people, you have the choice of going to a lot of these companies uh, who uh, claim to uh, go, you know, ensure that you have a good time in New Zealand, but we are based here and we are ensuring our clients are having a good time and receiving all the best support they can from a professional organization filled with a lot of licensed immigration advisors. All right, Karen, hope to see you here in New Zealand soon, Matt. <clears throat> so there's Gayatri Mohan who's saying, would you please help my daughter become your client? Uh, firstly, as we have a long way to go ahead. Hey, Gayatri, yeah, we would love to help your daughter. You have not mentioned uh, if your daughter uh, is in uh, New Zealand or she's still in India or some other country. So you will need to confirm to us where she is and uh, contact us. You know, you can uh, call our team. If you're based in India, call our team in India on this uh, toll free number. It is 1-800-103-6525. If she's already in New Zealand, you can ask her to give us a call on 
0800 uh, which is our toll free number toll free number or she can uh, connect with us you you can inbox me her contact details and also mention what kind of uh, support and service that she is uh, wanting to require uh, and yeah we'll do our best to help her but yeah we're, we're absolutely delighted to always uh, uh, acquire more uh, clients and good clients and yeah we are, our team is uh, big and strong enough uh, to cater to a lot of clients we are almost 41 or 42 people at this moment and it's growing quite dramatically so we have the depth of uh, people and expertise to be able to have so please ask uh, your daughter to get in touch with us Gayatri and would absolutely love to help all right <clears throat> Amrita asked me a question Amrita you're being a bad girl you haven't left your uh, contact details nor have you uh, uh, you know mentioned whether you're an AJV client or not I normally do not answer questions unless and until one of these things is uh, ticked, which is that you have to either confirm that you're an AJV client or you'll have to share your contact number. So Amrita, I'm gonna answer uh, your question in good faith uh, that you will share your contact number with us if you're not an AJV student uh, or if you're an AJV student, you just you know confirm to me that you're an AJV student. But how is EIT College in Napier? Fantastic, no problems with uh, EIT, nor about the city of Napier. If you go back to my YouTube channel and uh, uh, which is Arun Jacob. Uh, just go to YouTube and type Arun Jacob and you will uh, see that I have my channel. And uh, I think that I made a video about Napier as a city. And uh, also I've been there a few times. And yeah, lovely campus. We, are, we have, Our students are uh, absolutely having a good time. No complaints whatsoever about the institution. We have a great rapport with the uh, senior managers at EIT. And but so far, so good. And again, not sure what particular course you're choosing. But yeah, EIT is good owned and operated by the government of new zealand so no problems about that so you're assured of you know good quality and safety which means it's not a uh, an institution that suddenly uh, shut shop one day and you're left in the lurch with your fees gone and not knowing what to do next so absolutely brilliant institution and now that i've answered and given my opinion amrita i'm hoping you will uh, share your contact number with us so that we can talk to you and engage you and uh, speak to you more at length about uh, EIT and Napier and what are the things to expect in New Zealand and all the things you need to do to succeed eventually because it's not an easy journey guys and well I've stopped using it nowadays but in the early days of my live sessions I used to use this very cliche term saying that uh, when you decide to go overseas whether on migration or education with the thought of migration eventually the real drama starts after you land in uh, the country uh, I've been a migrant to you know two or three different countries I spent some time in the US, UK, uh, and uh, travel to Canada and a few other places. And then I moved to New Zealand and uh, sort of settled down here finally. I can tell you the real drama always starts up to land in the country, and which is what we are trying to do, uh, Amrita and the rest of you all listening to this particular broadcast. As we understand, you know, we are migrants ourselves who so have been through the cycle. And that's the reason we've set up our processes in such a way that once we are done doing your admission visa or your visa properly in India. When you land here, our local team takes over and we continue to hold your hand and walk with you till you are, you know, sort of uh, strong enough to walk by yourself. So that's really what sets apart AJB, I believe. Uh, and it's working like a charm. And I could go back to uh, Google and type for our listing on Google and say, people are giving us reviews. We are not asking them. We are not forcing them. Or if you go to Facebook, uh, there are people, you know, uh, voluntarily leaving their uh, reviews at that absolutely gladdens our heart because, you know, uh, we are, like I said, we're just waking up and doing a good job every day. And uh, my wonderful team and I, all we're doing is, you know, we're staying committed to our clients and, uh, and to our ethos that we will do this business as well as we can, as professionally as we can, as honestly as we can. And, and in the, uh, you know, the most friendly and frank manner that we can. It seems to be working, Amrita. So if you are serious about uh, succeed in New Zealand, talk to us at AJB. Inbox me uh, on Facebook and uh, I'll have one of my team members contact you. Guy three has come back and said, currently my daughter is doing 12th grade with uh, PMC and physical education. Uh, would you please uh, suggest best engineering course? Yeah, sure, uh, Guy three, <clears throat> but because she's got a very interesting combination of PMC, which I'm thinking is physics, mathematics, chemistry, uh, and uh, then also, and physical education, which is a, a reasonably interesting combination, really. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, we, let, let, we would like to have a talk with her. 
Uh, we would like to check with her what exactly her interest is. If she is strong in her, in her physics, math, uh, uh, chemistry, and wants to get into engineering, yes, yeah, certainly we can help her with that. But for whatever reason, she has actually got an interest towards uh, uh, physical education. There are some fantastic courses in sports and exercise and you know, uh, management of sports and exercise. Uh, the, you know, potentially she could also lean uh, towards you know uh, other things uh, which are related to sport and exercise science and those kinds of things. So a lot of options are definitely available and great uh, opportunity for a young girl uh, who, after completing her 12th, can come to New Zealand and study a bachelor's. A lot of advantages of doing a bachelor's here in New Zealand because over those three years, uh, you will end up becoming sort of completely um, attuned to the city, uh, to the country, and uh, totally acclimatized to being a Kiwi. Uh, so, which will set you up very well for your future career and settlement in New Zealand. Because, you know, once you do your bachelor's, you also get a three years uh, post-study work visa. So I'd say, Gayatri, please share your number uh, and uh, please connect uh, yourself and your daughter to our team. Uh, or like I said, you can call us yourself on these numbers. Uh, I'm assuming you're based in India, so you can call us on these numbers. And one of our very knowledgeable and very well-trained advisors will connect with you and then we will take it forward from there. All right, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Karen is back. Karen has asked us, now Karen's thrown a googly at me and he is now offering a third institution uh, besides um, uh, Welltech and uh, uh, Quintech, and he is now asking, what about ARA? CAD came from ARA, uh, which is also, you know, linked to mechatronics. And uh, so mechatronics obviously is the marriage between mechanical engineering and electronics. And uh, there's some beautiful work happening in that particular area. And I think when artificial intelligence gets married to this already strong marriage, I think it will get even more potent. Uh, Karan, uh, I think you are choosing some very good uh, courses and some very good institutions. And all of them have good potential. Mechatronics has good potential. But maybe CAD CAM uh, is very clearly defined uh, because it's computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacture. Mm -hmm. So it is a very clearly defined path. So maybe that will actually help you to crack a job a lot quicker. Uh, because again, some of our students have been into, uh, done this course in CAD CAM, um, have succeeded very quickly because mechatronics, while of course it is a, also a technical engineering sort of a, a, a subject course, is not very you know clearly defined, so to speak. But CAD CAM is just CAD CAM. You can't it can't be anything else. So and you know for employers in New Zealand, if you're looking at a longer term perspective of getting employed after your course is completed, yeah, perhaps CAD CAM. And I would actually. Pick CAD CAM over mechatronics. If you were to ask me what is my first uh, choice, I'd say CAD CAM because you know, I think you are eligible to uh, go either into CAD CAM or into mechatronics. So yeah, but if I really had to pick and choose, I'd say yeah, CAD CAM one and mechatronics two. Okay, cool. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Clayton says, don't know, didn't know this was happening. Just joined the chat. Hope I'm not too late. Don't worry, Clayton. Um, even if you joined it late, you can uh, rewind it later once it becomes a video and sits on uh, our Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, just rewind and go back and watch it from the beginning. But Kailog, thanks for joining, buddy. I appreciate your presence here today. Shabam Chauhan says, I want to come to uh, New Zealand for graduate diploma in business. Please tell me which city is best for me as a uh, concern about part-time job and full-time job. Okay, uh, Shabam, more than your concerned about part-time job and full-time job, I'd be concerned about your choice of course, my friend, uh, is why are you taking this uh, course in uh, the graduate diploma in business? Because sometimes this particular course can be uh, not very clearly defined. And I am not a very big fan of people uh, who uh, are uh, fresh graduates opting to do a graduate diploma in business because, and actually you must uh, go back to my YouTube channel and see one video, which is I think one of the, earliest videos I made about two or three years ago, and it sits on my uh, channel, and I think it's got some of the most uh, uh, views, which says, I think it says, uh, what business course should I study in New Zealand, I think is the, is the topic or uh, title of that particular video. Go back and watch that uh, 
Shubham, because I'm not a fan of, uh, as an advisor, you know, we are all you young people come to me for advice. I'm not a fan of uh, young people jumping into management courses and business courses because because it's, it, 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 to go through that path, you know, if you're coming into business at a higher level, at a postgraduate level, uh, doing a PG diploma and specializing in marketing, or you're coming into uh, doing a course in business at a PG diploma level, uh, uh, specializing in accounting or something like that, I'm fine with it. You know, I have no problems with it. But when you come for a generic business course and you're already concerned about your part-time and full-time job, I think you will need to reevaluate a little bit to see whether this is actually the best choice for you. Because unfortunately, some of the biggest failures in New Zealand who uh, came with the aspiration of studying in New Zealand and finding a job and settling down took these uh, generic business courses. And just recently, I was at the shop where I go to pick up my weekly quota of booze. And there I met this guy uh, who was, uh, you know, became like a friend now because I keep going there. Uh, every other weekend so and uh, he said like he also came and did a generic course in business and then he actually had a beautiful background in market research and ideally he should have gotten into a postgraduate diploma level because also at a pg diploma level if you have the english that means you end up with a three years post-study work visa and that's the kind of stuff that will set you up for success uh, shubham not uh, generic uh, graduate diplomas in business we are not big fans of that to be honest and uh, there will be this uh, stupid silly agencies which will try and push you into them because that's their quality you know they they can only deal with students or institutions of that level so you know but we don't you know our students are right up there so shubham thanks for sharing your number i'll have one of our advisors get in touch with you and examine to see what is it that we can help you with uh, in the business side of things because within business as well there are good specific areas which will make you a professional in that specific area and not do a very generic uh, business course which really will not do anything for you all right so thanks for reaching out i think it's one of the most important decisions of your life that you shared your number today and one of us is going to talk to you and give you some good honest friendly and frank advice all right cool Collins Asdu has got a very interesting number. I can't make out uh, from where that is. Um, yeah, it could be from any country. I don't have the time to Google it, but uh, okay. I've been rambling on without checking to see if, I'm quickly checking to see what if and there are any comments from my team. And right, so there is a query from uh, uh, Srikant Krishnamurti who says, uh, Hey, everyone, welcome back after a couple of weeks. You look fresh and energetic. Thank you, Srikant. I didn't realize I was fresh and energetic. I thought today was one of my lowest days. In fact, I was telling my team, You're likely going to see a very sick Arun sitting in front of the camera today. But AJVN here for July Intake. Fantastic. Thanks, uh, Srikant, for choosing us. Uh, could you please share your inputs on uh, is it valuable to get certified in IT Professionals New Zealand, the organization that promotes IT education? To if I apply visa for July Intake in April 2nd or 3rd week, would I be able to make it for July Intake? Okay, and here's put a couple of uh, hashtags. Excuse me, ask AJV and AJV Rocks. Thank you so much, Srikant. Really. Uh, makes me happy to look at those hashtags. So to answer your question, yeah, it's always a good thing to get uh, your, uh, you know, um, qualification certified by ITPNZ, as it is called, you know, Information Technology Professionals in New Zealand. I think that's a good one because sometimes that particular certificate can actually give an employer the uh, confidence that they're dealing with the right person. So certainly I would say, yes, you can do that. And your second question is if I apply for uh, July intake in April. So if you're going coming for the July intake, April, May, June. Yeah, I think you will absolutely make it. Uh, although recently two of my colleagues, uh, uh, which is uh, Navya and Tulika, who are both uh, licensed immigration advisors. Uh, and uh, they are also ex-immigration officers of New Zealand. So they actually both went from Delhi to uh, meet uh, the Immigration New Zealand uh, head in Bombay, and uh, Mumbai, and uh, uh, some more senior staff members of the team that handles student visas. So Navya and Tulika had a fantastic interaction with them, and they, they were sharing the minutes of the meeting with me as well. And I think they've given very clear guidelines as to when people should apply for, uh, uh, you know, to be able to make it on time for the courses. So I think you're in touch with Mubarak at the moment. Um, 
uh, Srikant. So check with Mubarka. Mubarka will also check with her team leader, who will be one of uh, these two people, uh, which is Nabi Artulika. And then you will get the exact timing. But as regards your first question, that uh, should you get your uh, qualifications endorsed by ITPNZ? I think it's a good idea, although it may not be required if you are also coming here uh, uh, to uh, New Zealand uh, uh, and are about to go into. If you are about to do an IT course here in New Zealand, then that particular uh, course would automatically be recognized by AJ, you know, NZQA and. Uh, ITP NZ would of course also be recognizing it. So it may not be necessary, but if you have some extra money to spare and you can have the time and uh, uh, effort to put in to get your you know qualifications from India also endorsed, absolutely a good thing. I will definitely say yes to that. Okay. Right. Clayton, there are some, uh, Clayton, uh, I got some uh, news about you, Clayton, from. Uh, uh, your uh, AGV advisor, uh, Lydia, she says that you are uh, applying for a lovely master's level course in applied management and uh, just a few more of your documents are awaited and she's prayed, uh, given you some praise and she says that uh, you have been working very diligently on it. So well done, Clayton. <laughs> That's what is required for all you guys and girls who are applying to come to New Zealand. Yes, we will work very diligently, of course, on your behalf. But, you know, uh, two people can make that clap happen, you know, and uh, which is why it's great to hear that, uh, Clayton, you're putting in your best efforts to make this happen. All right. Awesome. OK. Oh. Right, Collins, uh, I'm going back to that question, says, can people with high school diploma get admission in New Zealand? Why not? Uh, absolutely, it depends on uh, which particular uh, country your high school diploma was from. And uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, uh, Collins. Uh, and because you've shared your number, uh, I can't quite make out from which country it is. But you know, uh, uh, the simple answer is yes. Uh, to your question, but I'll ask my team members to get in touch with you and we will engage you in a more detailed conversation and try to understand what exactly you're seeking. I'm certain we'll be able to help you. All right, cool. Karen says, thanks. Thank you, Karen. I must say thank you um, uh, for uh, you know choosing to work with AJV. Uh, and then Ra, uh, I think uh, I'm trying to read my Hindi, the names in Hindi. So Raju Th Tamang, I think, Tamang, yeah, okay, yeah. So, sir, first of all, I'm really thankful for your valuable information. You're welcome. So my question is, as a BBA graduate student, what should the, be the career I should further pursue? Okay, I guess you're talking about career. So uh, Raju, again, like I said, you know, if you're a guy who's already done BBA, obviously it makes sense for you to continue in your business stream, unless or until you have some kind of a, Hidden talent. For instance, I did my BCom honors when I was a young guy, uh, many moons ago. <laughs> and uh, but I realized I had a passion and talent for communication, and I aspired to do an MA in mass communication after I finished my BCom honors. So I was ready to switch from my commerce and business background and switch completely into a, something else like uh, communication, which would have involved television and movie production and stuff like that. So we will need to speak to you, Raju. So please share your number and we will have a chat with you. We are not only about helping people to, you know, get uh, uh, admission and visa into New Zealand, and we are also about helping people realize their true aspirations. And we are not the kind of people who will give you, uh, you know, uh, those cliched, uh, cut and paste uh, kind of uh, solutions. We'd like to encourage people to be who you are, uh, and we will stand by your dreams and your aspirations. So, for all I know, Raju, you might be a, a hidden 3D animator. Tell us, talk to us, and let us know about it, and we'll. Ensure that dream comes true. All right, cool. Gayatri has confirmed that she's from India. All right, Gayatri, please get in touch with us and we'll help your daughter. Okay, uh, okay. And then Harshi Kamagi, hello, sir. I'm Tanuja, a proud AJBM from Sri Lanka. Thank you, uh, Tanuja. That's such a lovely way to start your query. Uh, Aibhavan, that's so beautifully put together. Proud AJBM from Sri Lanka, fabulous. We are so glad that we cater to so many different nationalities. I would like to thank Ruben Madhvi and Akanksha for their great and big efforts on success of my 
student application. I got my AIP today, which has approval in principle, and so happy of it. This was a long-term dream of mine and got successed through AGB, which is providing uh, truthful advices uh, all the time. The team AGB is very active with good hearts, always even to uh, at any of our uh, query. Thank you very much for all the knowledge you're giving through online. I'm highly recommended AGV, uh, even for my Sri Lankans to get access to uh, their New Zealand dream. Good luck, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Tanuja, one of the best comments I received, well, beautiful way to start my uh, week. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, Ruben also left a comment, uh, Tanuja, saying, we got an approval for you in spite of your previous uh, student visa rejection through other agencies. So yeah, fantastic. Uh, Tanuja, so happy for you in the first instance. Uh, uh, and yes, uh, that's what we're here for, to, uh, to work with genuine students and ensure that good genuine students get the, get the best support they can from a good, honest company like HIV. So happy to hear you. I actually feel your happiness right now because I know how beautiful that moment is when a visa is granted and uh, some of my colleagues who used to uh, work with Immigration New Zealand before as uh, uh, you know immigration officers, so we all have a chat sometimes and I ask them, so how does it feel to be you know, sort of on this side of the table and uh, they say the joy is so much more higher uh, in fighting for a case and then getting that approval rather than being an immigration officer and approving it. They said the joy, the, the feeling of accomplishment is so much higher. So. Yeah, and thanks to people like you, Tanuja. You, uh, you know, I think uh, had a, an unfortunate previous decline, but then you came to us and you trusted us and put your faith in us. And I'm glad my team and I, we could stand up to your expectations. Warm welcome to New Zealand, and I hope to meet you here. Thank you so much for kindly sharing about us to all your Sri Lankan friends. So yeah, we are doing actually very well with our Sri Lankan clients, by the way. So AJV is not restricted only to India, although we have our... Uh, largest number of clients coming from uh, India uh, and we are very happy and proud of all our Indian clients but we are also equally happy and proud and uh, joyful to work with uh, clients from Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Egypt, Brazil, Singapore, uh, or oh, you name it, we, uh, Myanmar. Our, one of our most recent uh, uh, visas and clients was also from Myanmar. So yeah, we are absolutely going global and we're getting a nice footprint and uh, some very exciting things planned for this year, guys. So, so watch, watch this space, okay? Cool. Many congratulations, Tanuja, and I hope to see you here in New Zealand. Cool. Gayatri says, thanks. You're welcome, Gayatri. Please put your daughter in touch with us, and we will take care of her. Don't worry. You know, we, we take care of all these young people who come to us. <sighs> Kulip Singh asks, can you accept uh, 10 years gap? Yeah, it depends. If you had a... Uh, Genuine reason, Kuldeep, why uh, you had uh, a 10 years gap. We have no problem with that because people have gaps in their life. I went back to studies after uh, how many years? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even remember when I was in college last, but uh, I went back and did my graduate uh, certificate in New Zealand immigration advice to be able to uh, get my license. So, yeah, I, mean, I don't see any reason why there can't be long gaps. And uh, if you are a genuine student and a genuine client, uh, who's got a good, honest, valid reason to come and study, take that post-study work with and work towards residency, we will absolutely support you, Kuldeep. So uh, thanks for sharing your number. Our team will get in touch with you and we will take it forward from there. All right, cool. Okay, uh, already answered Srikant's question. So then I have a question from uh, nobody less than Jesus God. Oh, fantastic. Today is my lucky day. <laughs> Okay, so Jesus God, I wonder what your real name is, unless, yeah, sometimes people can be named Jesus. Uh, happens a lot in the South American countries. They actually have this uh, uh, name to them called Jesus, which is, you know, Jesus in Spanish. Uh, so, yeah, they can be people named, but Jesus and last name God sounds a little far-fetched. <laughs> All right, so, hello, after trying a lot for teaching program, always lag behind by one score and PTE test, please tell about medical physicists, job scope, study chances of settlement in detail, please. Okay, uh, right. Uh, okay, now there, I have a bit of a problem with your query there because it looks like you were trying to get into a teaching program, uh, but you were not succeeding because you were not able to crack the required uh, uh, English score, uh, whether it is PTE or IELTS. And, 
And now we are asking whether you can shift into something like uh, medical physicists, which is so far removed uh, from uh, teaching. So unless and until you are somebody who's had a very strong background in science. So yeah, potentially you could have been somebody who did a BSc, Bachelor's of Science, and then did a BA, which is Bachelor's of Education, and then we're attempting to get into education in New Zealand uh, course, but you were not able to crack the English. And then if you are seeking to get into a science related subject, yes, we will accept that. And, you know, and but if you're just jumping at something called medical physicists just for the heck of uh, uh, changing because you're not able to crack the teaching side of things, then maybe not the right thing to do. Uh, but like I said, if you have, a, and I'm assuming you have some kind of a background in uh, science and that's the reason you're, but there could be potentially other, uh, if you already have a background in science, there could be other courses which will uh, are, you know, very job oriented. Um, and you could potentially look at some of them like a medical laboratory science could be one. Uh, if you have a BSc uh, in, with biology, physics, chemistry in background, or there is, you know, a, maybe some health related course potentially as well is something we could look at. Thanks for sharing your number. And uh, one of our team members will get in touch with you. And we will also try to see why you're not able to crack your PTA because, you know, that's obviously your first choice. You want to uh, do uh, teaching as a course, but you're not able to crack it for some reason. So we will see if we can, you know, uh, help you to sort out that uh, one band that you're not able to crack and actually get into what you like doing, which is teaching. And because as I keep saying, we are not people who, uh, encourage or ask people to deviate from their real interest. People must stick to their real interest always. In fact, I strongly recommend to all you young people listening, do not fall into the trap of these stupid, silly agents who will push you into something which is not your real interest. Number one, for them to earn mon more money. Number two, because they don't have the competence to help people to grow. So, you know, so you be careful. You guys stick firm to your real interest and talk to a company like AGV and we will help you get there. All right, cool. Thanks, uh, Jesus, for sharing your number. We will get in touch with you and see how best we can help you. All right. Okay. Prairakakar asks, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I, was, I was smiling at the next comment from Garo. <laughs> Prairag says, hello, which is the best hospitality school for level eight in New Zealand, please? Hello, can you share your number, please? Uh, so that we can give you uh, a good list of all these uh, institutions because there are a lot of very good hospitality courses and uh, institutions in New Zealand. We would like to understand what which particular area of hospitality you're interested in. Is it food and beverage? Is it front office? Is it culinary? Is it administration? There are so many, you know, uh, subsections inside uh, uh, hospitality. So we would like to know, Prairak, and we can only do it if you share your number or you call us proactively. You can call us on one of these numbers. Depending on if you're in India, you can call us on the uh, toll-free number. If you're in already New Zealand, you can call us on, uh, excuse me, uh, you can call us on uh, that toll-free number in uh, New Zealand, uh, if you're not in uh, India or New Zealand, just send us an email to one of those places. And yeah, we would love to uh, get in touch with you and uh, talk you through because just saying this particular college is good or that particular college is good is not the right way of advising people. It is like you walk into a doctor's uh, clinic and uh, just say, doc, I have a you know headache and the doctor straight away gives you a pill without even examining you or <laughs> understands when you're having this headache or, you know, what could be the underlying reasons and causes? That's how we guys work. You know, we we are not those uh, you know people who just look at uh, somebody's question and straight away give an answer. We don't ever do that, prayer uh, because it is about your future. It is about how well uh, you need to get onto the right track. Because at this age, if you guys take the wrong track, guys, uh, trust me, it'll take you a lot of time, money, and effort to uh, come back. And you know, all the time uh, you're getting older, so. Please share your number, Prayak, and we would absolutely love to put all the options in front of you and then give our advice saying, okay, your special interest is in this. And for that reason, this institution is good because of these particular reasons. All right. So, yeah, please share your number. Gaurav says, yo, thank you for the T-shirt, Arun Jacob. It was delivered to my brother in India. Fantastic, Gaurav. Sorry we missed uh, having it delivered to you. Uh, the normal AJV T-shirt that I wear, we give one. 
to all our students who um, reach the stage of uh, uh, applying for the visa. We know that you're one step closer to New Zealand. So uh, our wonderful team in India will uh, post it. And, you know, it's a little bit of a little surprise to all our students. Looks like you missed it. Well, ask your brother to enjoy the T-shirt. And I promise you, I'll send you one from here as well. OK, so please inbox what's your size. Is it small, medium, large? And I'll have one sent you here in New Zealand as well, Gaurav. Okay, catching my breath and checking to see. Okay, Prairak, I also have a bit of a feedback from you about from my colleague Nisha, uh, saying uh, that uh, that you are actually connected to Nisha Karmokar, one of my colleagues uh, and a fantastic advisor, by the way. Uh, but you are not responsive, and that you disconnect the call. Uh, and you are not uh, responding on or replying on WhatsApp either. See, we don't like behavior like that, uh, Prairag, because it actually upsets me that, you know, you guys want to come and take free information from me and my colleagues who come in, but you don't want to respond back. That is actually very discourteous, and we do not like behavior like that, Prairag. So if you are a genuine human being, uh, you know, with sincerity, uh, then you will need to you know, respond back and talk to us because at the end of the day, what are we trying to do? We are trying to help you, my friend. You know, sure, you know, uh, yeah, we are also a business and we are also trying to earn money and, you know, run our families and take our salaries. But at the end of the day, we can only do it if people like you respond back to us and we give the best advice possible to you and help you because we get a lot of uh, uh, people who, you know, try to kind of take information from us, don't talk to us, then they land up in New Zealand to some other agency, and then they realized, oh my God, I should have gone through AJV because once they land here, they realized the kind of uh, mess they got themselves into because they're in the wrong course, the wrong college, or the wrong city, or nobody to support them as compared to our AJV students who are jumping up with joy. Check with Gaurav. In fact, you know, if you, Gaurav Tantri, who is one of, I just answered about the t shirt, you ping him, you know, directly by yourself and ask him, hey, Gaurav, is it doesn't make sense for me to come through AJV and Gaurav will tell you without any coaching from me or any of my team members because Gaurav experienced our entire uh, process and uh, the way we deal with these things. So, you know, you guys need to be careful because don't uh, uh, spill the milk and then start crying over it. As the old saying uh, goes, don't cry over spilled milk. Best is to prevent a situation right now prior. And if you're truly sincere and if you respect me as a senior advisor in this industry, today I request you to pick up the phone and call Nisha back and have a good conversation, okay? Because at the end of the day, we're trying to help you to have a good future. All right, cool. Okay. Right, where are we at? I'm uh, almost coming to the end of my session. Is my bell around? Yes, it is. But I'll answer a few more. I think there's still some time left here. Right, cool. Okay. Ahmad Mefu says, I'm a, an AJV student. AJV is one of the best New Zealand-based agency I have ever seen. They always give perfect and good advice to their student. However, healthcare assistant is good for future job and PR. Hey, Emma, thank you so much for that uh, wonderful feedback. Much appreciated. Yes, uh, healthcare assistant is a good uh, feed to choose because uh, <clears throat> the healthcare industry has been suffering from a lot of shortages and uh, in New Zealand, the number of uh, people who are getting <coughs> who are getting older is increasing because of which healthcare assistants are, are kind of almost becoming a shortage. So definitely good choice, uh, Emma. And some of our former students are already working as uh, healthcare assistants. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, see, I held out till the end of the session and now my irritation in the throat has started. So, yeah, good choice, uh, Emma. And thank you for your kind words. <clears throat> Get in touch with us and we'll help you. All right, cool. <clears throat> Gayatri asked me another question. Gayatri, uh, about your other question uh, about universities and PTs, which is better? They're both good, they're both owned and operated by the government of New Zealand. Universities tend to have a slightly higher admission criteria as compared to polytechnics, but they're both equally good. I can tell you that. <clears throat> Speak to our team and they'll help you further. All right. Yeah. 
Clayton, have a quick question. What is the role of natural disasters in New Zealand? Is it something to be concerned about? <clears throat> what is the safest town in this regard? I wish I could tell you one safe town in this entire uh, planet, Clayton. You know, so these are all acts of God as they are known mm -hmm. um, in business and insurance uh, parlance. Uh, so yeah, I mean, where I live, Hamilton, you know, we are quite safe. So are you know, many, many other cities. Natural disasters can strike anybody anywhere and not just only in New Zealand. So don't be overly concerned about that. Uh, New Zealand has had a go back into Google and do your own research. We might have had the same amount of natural disasters like any other country would have had. Every country has its share of natural disasters. But don't don't fret too much about things that are not in your control. OK, cool. <clears throat> I live here with my wife and kids, and I'm absolutely at peace, so nothing to worry about. <clears throat> uh, Raju Tamang has shared his number and saying he would uh, be waiting for your feedback. Raju, our team will get in touch with you immediately after this session, and then you can uh, have a chat with them, all right? Yeah. <clears throat> Hassan Sajad Shah says, uh, can we get your support if you're already studying in New Zealand, uh, like for post-study work visa, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely, Hassan. We help non-AGV students also. Unfortunately, we do charge. Uh, we provide a free post-study work visa service to all AGV students, by the way, because of our way of saying thank you for choosing to come to New Zealand through us. But uh, those of you who have come to New Zealand through other agencies can get in touch with us, uh, and we will help you with your post-study work visas. But we will charge you a fee for that, OK? So the number to call is that. <clears throat> if you're already in New Zealand, we've set up a toll-free number. It's 0800-696-977. OK, cool. OK, Sabina Lama, my dear friend uh, from India, looking forward to meeting you. I'm sorry, Sabina, I was in Auckland today, but I just didn't have the time to come and say hi to you. But next time, I will, I promise you. Sabina says, kia ora, kia ora, kia kue, Sabina. My postgrad diploma in communication is getting over by December. My query to you is by when should I apply for post-study work visa as my visa expires on 31st March? <clears throat> also with uh, the coronavirus issue, would, uh, would this impact uh, these visas? By the way, waiting to meet you in Auckland and get my AJB t-shirt, absolutely. Like I told you, I was in Auckland today with Mary, but we guys were very rushed for time and we had to, rush back to Hamilton because Mary had to go pick a kid from uh, the kindergarten or, or kindy as we call it. So so I was the official driver for the day. So <laughs> no, we rushed back, Sabina, but no, but certainly I'm quite keen to meet you as well. And, you know, hear about all your PR stories uh, because you had, you've shared some so amazing uh, stories on your Facebook. So I've been quite curious to meet you, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> you can apply for your post-study work visa the moment you get the course completion certificate from your university. So that's what we recommend people. Uh, and ideally, we would say uh, four to six weeks before the uh, end date on your uh, of your visa, uh, which is uh, of your current student visa, which is 31st March in this instance. So that's what we strongly recommend. And as I just uh, shared with somebody else, I think with Hassan, uh, we do provide a free post-study uh, work visa uh, service to all our AGV students. So lucky you, you get a free uh, service from us. and. So just pick up the phone, talk to <clears throat> Virginia or to Rena or to Mary, and uh, we will help you. But you know, you're still some time away. So don't stress too much. One of my advices to people, Sabina, is uh, stop to smell the roses. Uh, you uh, come off the, uh, you know, the treadmill called working uh, in India. And that I, and I quite enjoy what you're doing. I can see, I keep following your Facebook, by the way. So it's kind of nice to see that you're, uh, taking your time to get get the sights and sounds of New Zealand, and I like the fact you're enjoy, really enjoying yourself. So yeah, take your time. Don't be in a hurry. We are always a phone call away at any time to <clears throat> help you. And yeah, sure, absolutely. Your t-shirt is also on the way. Please inbox me whether your size is a medium, large, or small, and I'd be happy to. But I'm I'm quite keen to come and meet you as well. It'll be lovely. So next time I and Mary other will come and drop by and say hi to you and buy you a coffee or a beer, whatever you prefer. All right, cool. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Ankit is giving some advice to all prospective students, saying you must all listen to the New Zealand national anthem. I love it as well, Ankit, by the way. I love the introduction in Maori and then the way it switches to English. I love it as well. Yeah. 
Jasmeet Malhotra says, it's regarding my wife's interest for master's in supply chain management or MBA. Bit confused. Jasmeet, I completely understand. And again, as I keep saying, I just can't say without knowing any background whether uh, for your wife it is best to go into uh, business supply chain management or MBA. We need to know a few more details. Thanks for sharing your number. One of our team will get in touch with you and we will certainly come back and uh, help you with that. But hey, look, we would love to work with you, you know. And uh, like we've helped uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of couples to move to New Zealand and settle down and do well here. All right, cool. <clears throat> Somebody from Ghana has written saying, uh, Abibu Sunny, uh, I am thinking of having internship volunteer. Uh, hey, Abibu, you will need to share your number, mate, and we can help you. So yeah, please uh, give us your number. Jay Krishna, MP says, uh, has asked me some questions about uh, master's in structural engineering. Great course. Uh, Jay Krishna, but unfortunately, I have not shared your number. So, would you be so kind as to inbox me your number or share it right here if you don't want to, if you're okay sharing it in the public platform? But otherwise, just uh, inbox it to me and uh, we will get back to you. And uh, yeah, Srikant says, Thank you. You're welcome, Srikant. Chinna, I'm just running through all the uh, finishing questions. There's just a few more left, and then I'll uh, get on. I'm sure my team has told me it is time to <clears throat> ring the bell. Ah, there she is. My, my colleague Jyoti is uh, is my timekeeper when I do these live sessions, and she says, "Okay." I think she also counts to see how many times I'm coughing. <laughs> so anyhow, right. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'll finish off this last few quick ones. Shina M says, "I'm existing AGB student." Shina, how is there a difference in taking a 180 versus 240 credit course? Well. With respect to post study work visa or towards uh, your PR master's degree, not really, you know, I mean, it doesn't really uh, have much of a bearing towards uh, the post study work visa or towards residency for that matter. I mean, towards residency, yes, if you are uh, doing the mass two years masters and then uh, you have the required 160 points to be able to uh, make a claim for a direct uh, residency at the residency stage, potentially, perhaps it can but not at the post-study, uh, uh, you know, work visa level. So, and uh, by and large, most people do not get the 160 points, even if they do a two years master's, uh, which normally will be a 240 credit course. But like I said, uh, talk to your uh, advisor, whoever there is. So like I'm already out of time, so I'm not getting too much into depth with it, but ask to speak to one of our uh, uh, licensed advisors who is based in India, and we will be able to give you a much more detailed answer. But like I said, don't stress too much. Uh, <clears throat> it's about going logically step by step, finishing your course, getting a post study work visa, which is absolutely not a problem. Even if you're doing a 180 credit course, getting it to a relevant job. And if you're going to come for, uh, you know, masters, I think it will be pretty cool. Uh, you should be able to crack a job. All right. So don't worry too much about it. <clears throat> uh, Universal Video Blog says, Kiora, sir, Kiora, I'm uh, already getting help with HIV and now got conditional offer for master's in civil engineering. Wow, fantastic. At AUT, very good institution. It is my second master's uh, looking in New Zealand. Is it in line to get job after the master's in civil engineering? Absolutely. Absolutely, Matt. You know, we are uh, absolutely short of uh, uh, people in the construction industry. So please come and do your civil engineering and join our construction industry because we have lots of homes and roads to build. All right. Cool. Right, John Wesley asked, share this number. How can I apply for a work permit visa? I go back to my YouTube and uh, check uh, a video which says, how can I find a job in New Zealand? And it explains why it may not be the easiest of things to do uh, when you're not present in the country. Have a read of that, uh, sorry, have a listen of that video and then get in touch with our team. We've also shared your number, John. Uh, one of our team members will get in touch with you and we will hopefully Put you on the path towards your work with us. Sabina says, thank you. Yes, Sabina, I'm looking forward to catching up with you and having a coffee very, very soon. All right, cool. Thanks, guys, uh, girls. It's been lovely as always. Uh, I really thought I wouldn't last very long, but I seem to have some nice reserves of energy for an old man, which is pretty cool, <laughs> even if I'm giving myself a pat on the back. So <clears throat> thanks as always for watching my videos and my live sessions and uh, uh, this will, of course, be followed by my colleagues, Tulika, Navya, and Mary, who will also come live this uh, week. And uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes we wonder whether we're doing too many live sessions, but then we said, hey, look, uh, there are people every day who want to get uh, good information, authentic, authentic information 
from you know licensed immigration advisors and that is why we do this as our service to all you beautiful people who want to migrate to New Zealand because as much as you want to migrate to New Zealand, we in New Zealand also want to attract the best talent from different parts of the world. So come to this beautiful country called Aotearoa or the land of the long white cloud and come through AJV and we will make your dreams come true. All right. So till the next time, see you later. Good night. Pomarie. Bye-bye. <laughs>